Hi guys! Welcome to Paint Couture Facebook page. I'm Ann. I'm from Pearson Bell at Home in Old Town Spring, which is located in Spring, Texas. Thank you for hopping on today. When you hop on, let me know where you're from and tell me how your fall is already starting. We've got a really wonderful rainy day out there, so we decided to forego going on Wi-Fi and uh, we're going with the uh, quality of Verizon. So let's hope that we can keep this going. All right, so as I see some of you hopping on, hey Dustin, we're gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about what we're doing today. We're gonna do a couple of different things. Uh, first, this piece was brought to me and this is not a piece I would sell in my store, but it is one that we will probably eventually donate to a furniture bank or um, if, if we find a family that's in need, we'll, we'll go that route. We'll get there when the time is right. We have to let this cure. I don't want to give it away and it's not cured and they scratch it and they would be very sad. All right, so what this piece is, is a basically a, um, it's in good shape. Drawers work, everything works. There were a few little watermarks here on the top. This is essentially pressed wood or pressed product. I'm not even sure it's wood. It's pressed product with that sticker kind of top and a lot of people confuse that with a veneer and i'll tell you real quick a veneer is a very thin piece of wood and typically used on high-end or regular good furniture like pottery barn and things like that and you've got baker furniture and cargus will have veneers and the reason that most companies will use a veneer is one it's environmentally friendly because you only have so many trees and there are some species of wood that are no longer being um, I want to say harvested um, so you're gonna get veneers and like I said they are a very thin slice of wood about fingernail thickness and they're used to create furniture that's where you get that really beautiful sometimes you have a book match or a slip match you only will get those in veneer you're not gonna see that in a solid wood piece um, and also a lot of times we're in a very humid climate solid wood can work I have several pieces of solid wood that are warped so I will take a veneer any day. Now, what this was is not a veneer. Like I said, it's a pressed material with a sticker on it. So don't confuse that with veneers. Veneers are okay. Veneers are great. Veneers are typical. So my little PSA on veneers. All right, so what we're gonna do with this piece because it was all this kind of plain Jane. I had cute little knobs, we're keeping those. I went ahead and painted it and I want the top to look like wood and obviously it wasn't so I'm painted it Madagascar mocha this is kind of my go-to when it comes to painting our faux wood look on top so we got that we got two coats of Madagascar mocha on we've let it dry and now we're gonna go ahead and do is do our glazing we're gonna go ahead and go with black chiffon is my favorite for this technique Typically, I'm doing two coats of the uh, black chiffon, but because dry time, I need to wait 24 hours. So we'll only get one coat done and we'll kind of see after tomorrow once it's dry if I want to do a second coat or not. Sometimes I'm good with the first coat. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and adjust us a bit so you won't see me anymore. You'll see more of the piece. So we're going to come up here. We're going to tilt that down. I want you guys to get a good angle. So hopefully <clears throat> this will all go okay. And we did get started painting her because, well, this is, we want to get to the juicy goodness of this. So we're going to get into the making this happen. All right. So I have, I have a, um, this is a chip brush. It's a synthetic chip brush. It's actually a new favorite of mine. And then we have our black chiffon couture glaze and we're just gonna give that a little quick shake it does have a pudding like consistency okay guys where are we at there we are so see that it's very very thick so I love this we have a lot of work time all right and then you'll need a cloth that is lint free now this one is an old t-shirt has been laundered and i do um, shake them out really well to make sure i don't have any linty parts because if you do have lint it'll get all on this and you don't want that to happen 
so I don't leave you little lint fuzzies in your finish. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this. So we're gonna go with the top first, a little bit easier. So I'm gonna get a generous amount on my brush and I'm just gonna paint it on. And I get pretty generous. And I'm not really worried about my edges so much, so we'll get those in a GIF. And again, we use the base is Madagascar Mocha. And then this is Black Chiffon Glaze. Now you can also use this if you want a faux leather look. Do the same thing. Apply it on with a brush. And then instead of wiping it back, you will rag it. Like kind of press your rag and rag it off. And it gives you those nice leathery appearance. And you can also do that if you want to have a little depth in this. You could do that first. If you don't like it, let it dry and then go back over it and wipe it down. <clears throat> All right. Okay, now we're just gonna wipe. Get a little darker right there. Let me get over to the side. It's a little bit better if you go to, instead of standing in the middle, you might tend to go in a kind of windshield wiper motion. You don't want to do that. So a lot of times it's easier if you are standing at one end and wipe down. Okay, we're just going to do nice even strokes on that. Got a little wonky there, that's all right. Okay, we're gonna turn our rag around. And black chiffon is more translucent, so it's going to go on a little bit lighter than our black raven did, but it will dry just a tad darker than it's looking right now, okay? Pretty even here. Okay, and then we're going to wipe away those edges. Okay, I need to straighten that out. I actually want a little bit more back here. I got too much off. Let's get that a little bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna work that in. And turn my little rag around. I always get really messy with this. You can wear gloves, I don't, because I'd probably end up with a bigger mess. straightened out there. Alright, a little bit more right there. Come back, that's a little dark right there. So just work it until you get it where you like it. And again, like I said, it's going to dry just a little bit dark and you're okay with a little squiggle, a little bit of a natural finish here and there. So that will dry. I like how my edges are. Let me make sure I've got them all done. Get a little bit in that crevice there. Got a lot right there, so I'm gonna make that. And I know from experience I've got a piece that we had a very damaged top to it. And it was actually wood, but I wanted to, I never got the opportunity to stain it because it just was too damaged, the wood was. So I did this technique on it. So I know I'll have to come back and do a second 
coat because I want it to be a rich dark color put that in so, you know wood grain is not perfect all right let me toss this in some water real quick Get my lid on this we don't want my glaze to dry out so what we'll do is we'll let that dry completely get a baby wipe here to wipe my hands off but I want to get my piece dirty so very very easy very quick again walk away and let that dry and you'll come back and take a look at it and see if you like the depth or the darkness of it if you want it a little bit darker all you need to do is put on another coat of glaze so let's get this moved back all right so now what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna leave this alone like i said we'll look at it tomorrow and see how that that looks if we want it darker we'll just add another layer onto that so that's easy peasy this is not a wood piece we're wanting a wood look to it all right so now we want to do we have some plain Jane sides here we use Verit the ballet on the piece and I did put a few little transfers that I had just laying about on the front so what I wanted to try out was using one of my stencils so I'm actually going to need to change where I'm sitting. So let me move to the floor for this one. Let me get all my tools because I'm going to need my stencil, some tape, measuring tape, and we're going to play with the embossing medium. So if you haven't played with the embossing medium, it is definitely something you want to try. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this was the first time I actually got to play with it. I've done the, we've done the texture with crust, and we've done the crackle, and we've done pretty much every other product that we have with Paint Couture. But I hadn't seen anything or haven't done anything myself personally with the embossing medium. So I wanted to see how that was going to look. So let's get you down. All right, so we're using today one of my decor stencils. This is Stella. Stella. So what I like about these are very thick. So I don't think I would use a thin stencil, especially one that was very ornate. So I'd probably end up pulling these back, these little bits. There's lots of little bits on this. I don't know if you guys can see that but a regular thin stencil is going to not do as well, or maybe I'm just a brute and it wouldn't work as well for me. So let's go ahead and get you a little further in. Let me go a little down. So I'm gonna measure off because I cheated and already done one side. So we wanna make sure that your flourish, your stencil, wherever you're starting it, you want to have it at the same height as your other ones. So we, on that one, started the top of it at six and a half inches. So I want to make sure that I've got it six and a half inches on the top of this right here. So let's get some tape ready. And since this is freshly painted, I like to kind of pre I don't know what do you want to call this um, I don't want my tape so sticky that it pulls off my paint so I just put it on my blue jeans to kind of pull it off a little bit pull off the sticky all right so this will be a lot of fun doing it at an angle all right so we're gonna go ahead and get her centered and she's gonna be right about there. Okay. 
want to make sure she's straight. Okay. So I want to move her just a tad. All right, I'm going to measure again because I'm notorious for measuring once and cutting twice. So I want to make sure that I have this just right. I actually want to go a little closer to six here. All right. There, much better. All right, so we've got that on here. Make sure she's straight. And you notice there's kind of a little bit of a, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not setting flat totally on my piece. It's a little bounce right there. So I'm gonna tape up the sides. So you don't really want any loftiness to it. You don't want it pulling up basically. You want it as flush as possible to your piece. And I did tape this the bottom. Um, all it says is redesign the crema, but it um, goes all the way through, so I don't want to put embossing of redesign with crema on my piece of uh, furniture. Now, if you were doing something smaller, you can always tape off some of these to make a smaller portion. Not a big deal. So if you had a really big stencil, you could either cut it or just use tape to kind of block off areas you don't want your embossing medium, or if you're doing painting, you don't want to get that on there. All right, so we're using, let's see, here we go, our embossing medium. So it is a bit different than crust. So this is kind of reminds me, crust is fairly, fairly gritty. It's like sand in it. This reminds me of fluff or whip. You know what I mean? Like that yummy whip stuff you get in the holidays and you put on your sweet potatoes or whatever it is. I don't know because I'm not a big sweet potato fan. I like sweet potato pie. All right, so now we've got our piece taped on. There's gonna still be a little bit of pull up here and that's okay. You'll just kind of hold it down as you go through. I'm using a plastic spatula, um, a mud spatula. You can use this. You can use um, any kind of troweling tool just whatever, if you have a chalk paste tool, we do sell those as well, you can use that. Uh, you can also on this use chalk paste, but we want to use the embossing medium. So it's a bit creamy, so it's kind of like uh, maybe meringue, if you've ever made meringue, so it's, it's pretty thick, it's not gonna drip off. So you just take some on your little spatula or whatever you're applying it with, and you're just gonna go to town. You're just gonna squish it on there. Need to hold this guy from moving. I had to get creative with this little wheelie thing today because I knew that I needed to show you all kinds of sides. So, and we are just pushing it on. pushing it in all those openings from your stencil. And again, I would use a thick stencil. I, I don't know if this would work as well. It wouldn't be as thick of a design on a thin stencil, but it's definitely worth a try. Now there's also something else you can do with the embossing medium. You can actually put it on your piece and you can take, you, you know, kind of smear it on or ice it on like icing your piece. And you can take, let's say some um, burlap or lace and press into it to give a texture to your piece. So if you wanted a kind of a cool, let's say on the drawers, you can do kind of a cool burlapy look if you wanted to, that would be kind of fun. Uh, Kind of look so kind of opposite of what I'm doing okay I'm getting that all 
in there. I want to make sure that I've got all my little cavities filled and it's all smoothed out. Okay. Okay, there's a little spot here. Get that. Okay. All right, so we've got our entire stencil filled. Making sure it got nice and smooth lines. There's some big lines like that can will show up on the top, and that's okay. If you have that, you can always let it dry, and um, you could just sand that back a little bit. I like the organic chunkiness when I pull this off, so you'll see. All right, let me see. There we go. I hope I'm missing a little bitty pot, spot right there. Let me see if I can get it. There we go. All right. So let me wipe this off. You can just wipe it off and your tool is done. You don't have to really, it comes off really well. We're gonna go ahead and put our lid back on. Okay. And let's see. We're gonna go ahead and take the tape off. So we're gonna take, I like to take the sides off first okay. Get that side and then we're going to do the top and then we're just going to pull it voila so easy as pie now you will want to go ahead and rinse this off because you don't want your kind of uh, embossing medium, it'll it'll get nice and dry on there. So I'm going to take a baby wipe and just kind of wipe it up a little bit, so it's not just sitting on my stencil. And then I'll go back and I'll give it a good washing. That's why I kind of like the thicker stencils; they do a little bit better, um, especially on the abuse I give them. Okay, get my stuff cleaned off. All right, so let me see if you guys can see that really well. Let's go try to lower this just a tad. Maybe not. Don't you love technology? All right, so there you go. There's the embossed side. Now this is wet. We'll need to let that dry. I gotta remember my top is wet too. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it around. I don't know what I touched. All right, so. All right, so you guys can see this one side's finished. She is mostly dry. This takes a little bit longer to dry. Let me see if she's dry now. Actually, she's good and dry. So what we're gonna do is paint her the same color, and then I'm going to highlight it with um, either, my thought was, so you guys can see this, I'm kind of thinking, highlight it a little bit with, is that kind of metallic-y right there? That's, that's the new, new metallic that we've been playing with. It's very, very nice, very shiny. So I just want to make this pretty monochromatic. So doing a pink right over that, bare at the ballet, just paint it all one. And I'm thinking about highlighting her just this portion with this metallic that we have so that will happen I'll have to do it afterwards because we want to definitely make sure this is good and dry I don't want any extra moisture being trapped in between the layers of paint and this so we do want to let it dry really well um, so we'll get that good and dried out again we'll get this completed we'll see how she looks in the morning if the top needs to be needs, a, needs another coat of black chiffon or not it might be great the way she is 
I have a feeling I'm gonna like her with a, a bit more uh, black chiffon to give it a little deeper wood look to her. And we'll go ahead and get her hardware back on. We'll finish coat her. The top is gonna get dead flat top coat. Like I said, there was a little bit of water damage on this side here, so I don't want that to be noticeable. If I do a satin finish, it'll just stick out like a sore thumb. So to make that look all uniform, we'll do the flat, dead flat top coat so that you don't see any imperfections in that. It's my favorite top coat when you're hiding imperfections. And again, this piece is gonna be a piece we're donating. It is not a piece that um, I would be able to sell in my shop, but I think this would make a really cute piece for a little girl needing um, a little nightstand. So I think this would be perfect. So I um, will add a few more little touches to it, maybe some gilding wax to this piece. And that's it. So if you guys have questions on the embossing medium or glazing, just drop them down in the comments. I usually don't see any of those during our lives anyway. So this was just a very short, very sweet tutorial. Just wanted to kind of share all of that with you guys. Again, when you hop on or if you're re-watching this later, do hashtag replay. Pass this along to anyone that you think should see this or all your friends. Um, and make sure you give us lots of these in the in the box there below or and also go to our page and give us a follow and a like as well and we'd like to um, see what you guys think so have you tried the embossing if you haven't what do you want to see embossed how do you want to use it so uh, we love seeing your suggestions um, or your questions and it leads us to new activities and um, projects of our own so um, you can also go find your chalk or your paint couture products. You can go to the paint couture website and find your local retailer. Uh, or you can also shop from me. We're at pearsonbell.com. And of course, we have the coupon code 50 free ship to get you free shipping when you spend $50 or more in the U.S. on any paint products, uh, paint related items. Um, we'll, we'll get you there. If you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments. And guys, thank you for tuning in. Happy painting.